few months ago, we asked our followers of the Scottish Car Enthusiasts um, Facebook page to tell us what they thought would be emerging modern classics in 10 years' time. It's always a touchy subject and may not appeal where everyone agrees, but here are a few suggested by followers of our Facebook page. Number one, the Volvo 900 series. We like our wafty saloons here at Scottish Car Enthusiasts and Trains TV, having owned a Volvo S60 in the past. But we also like the idea of a huge estate as well. The 900 series was launched in 1990 and sold until 1998, when it became the S90 and V90. Number 2. Volkswagen Up GTI slash Lupo GTI A joint vote and it's the first of three Volkswagens, but it's the small GTIs of the Lupo and up. One of our followers thinks will be future classics. Let's start with the Lupo. Launched in 2000, it was well received by the motoring press, powered by a zingy 1.6 of 123 brake horsepower. Unfortunately, Volkswagen replaced the Lupo with the rather poor Volkswagen Fox until 2011 when the up came along, and by 2016, the successor to the Lupo GTI was unveiled for turbocharged TSI 1 litre 3 cylinder of 113 brake horsepower. What do you prefer? Lupo GTI or UP GTI? Number 4 BMW M3 E92 This generation of Beamer is often remembered for its howling V8 and for signalling the end of the old BMW era. The E92 has aged well, it revs to 8400 RPM. It might not be as fun as an E46. Power wise, 414 brake horsepower, not to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Add an aftermarket exhaust to release that V8 noise. Number 5 the Mitsubishi Shogun We're guessing one of our followers meant the second generation of Shogun launched in 1991 as a future classic. What do you think? Let us know. Num Number 6. The Mark IV Volkswagen Golf. Remember when the Mark IV Golf was street furniture alongside the Mark I Focus? You could get a Golf for any budget from a base model to an R32 and a GTI in between. Or even one that could pull like a train with a PD diesel unit. Number 7. The Mazda 323 F V6 
with only around 30 or so left on the road and a huge cult following for him, you can bag a fairly clean 323 V6 for much cheapness. The styling was designed by a former Porsche designer and has aged well. Number 8, the MG ZR. We've covered one of these in our Bring Back Max Power series, but the R3 design MG ZR is a cracking little car with a rev happy K series. Just make sure the head gasket is done. Number 9, the Honda S2000. Another rev happy car is the Honda S2000. Honda's VTEC two seater sports car was launched in 1999. The S2000 was notable for its exceptional Pacific power output of 124 horsepower per litre, the highest of any mass produced normal aspirated car until about 2010. Number 10, the Peugeot 306. Peugeot's replacement for the 309 was launched in 1993 and styled by Pininfarina. This was another runaway success for the French car maker. It spawned many trim levels, engines, and our pick would be a diesel turbo or a GTI 6 trim level. Fiat Uno at number 11. Fiat's 127 was recorded as the influential small car of all time, creating the Super Mini. So how do you go about and top it when the competition begins to heat up? Simple. Launch the Fiat Uno in 1983. It was car of the year in 1984, narrowly beating the newly launched Peugeot 205. Our pick would be the Turbo IE with the optional digital dash. Number 12, the Ford Focus Mark 1. Launched in 1998, Ford's replacement for the Escort was a roaring success and was a much better car than what it replaced. New Edge styling in Ford speak made it look fresh compared to the Mark IV Astra and Mark IV Golf launched at roughly the same time. And lastly, the Peugeot 106 and Citroen Saxo. Peugeot and Citroen Super Minis were an instant success, mostly among young drivers who would go out and modify them and take them to events like the Max Power Shows or Max Power Reunion. 
and with Citroen offering free insurance, the cars were just selling like hotcakes. So, there we have it. That is 13 um, cars we think could be emerging modern classics as compiled by our Scottish Car Enthusiasts Facebook followers. If you'd like to add on any more that you think would be um, emerging modern classics, um, we could come back and make a part two of this. Um, or if you agree or don't agree, then just add your comments in the description in, in the comments box below. As always, um, don't forget to like and subscribe to Scottish Car Enthusiasts and Trains TV. And we'll be back with a future video very soon. Farewell.